Hi, this is Dr. Emily Schrinning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. This state level forecast builds on what I shared in my 2050 forecast for the Northeastern region. I worked up this detailed forecast for your state separate from Northern New England because you have such different needs. Your states are very coastal, in some ways more vulnerably coastal. And here, let's look at this population density map, just a second. You can see here that with this density of population, it's just a completely different picture with Northern New England and this Southern New England tri-state region. If uh, this level of urbanization, the types of problems you're gonna have and the types of solutions you're gonna need, we need a different mindset going into this forecast. We're gonna talk about some changes to the land in this area first, and then we're gonna look at changes to the sea, which are gonna have much bigger impacts on your dense coastal cities than we saw in the Northern New England forecast. And we're gonna learn how to use some cool state-specific tools so you can get data for right where you are. On the land, you're gonna be looking at big changes in seasonality, bigger than projected for Northern New England. On top of that, there are huge differences in the high and reduced emission scenarios modeled in the federal report. The first fall freeze in this tri-state area could be a week later under a reduced emission scenario versus three weeks later with a high emission scenario. The last spring freeze, we're looking at two weeks earlier with reduced emissions versus three weeks earlier if we stay on our current emissions pathway. If we wanna minimize the change we're looking at, reducing emissions is critical. We've got a baseline of about three additional frost-free weeks. It's unlikely we'll see a change smaller than that in this area by 2050. But if we don't reduce emissions, we're talking about six total additional frost-free weeks a year. That's a really big change. Whether we're talking about reducing emissions or staying on our current pathway, these changes globally, they're gonna to lead to shorter winters, less snow, and in some parts of this tri-state area, basically no snow. The winter precipitation, precipitation is gonna come though, it's gonna fall as rain. In terms of seasonality, the single biggest difference between the models is how soon the fall comes in. In the higher emission scenario, you're getting a lot of the increased heat coming in the form of hotter summers. So first, we're gonna see these milder winters, earlier springs, and then under more extreme scenarios, we also get intensification of the hotter, longer summer. You're already seeing longer, hotter summers in this region, and it's worth considering the burden that this can place on a healthcare system. It's 2021. We're all thinking more about these issues now. Many of us know someone personally who's been unable to get normal medical treatment due to an overburdened healthcare system. Especially in a dense urban area, we wanna consider these health factors as we look towards 2050. We've got some great projections from Rhode Island to help us visualize this potential burden. So just a second, I wanna look at this with you. Just pulling up the map. We'll share the screen. So it's probably not a surprise to anyone that you get more visits to the ER, the hotter that it gets. And here we've got a nice graph showing that relationship between the relative risk of people going to the ER and the maximum daily temperature. What's interesting for our discussion is this figure here. If you look at this RCP 4.5 and 8.5, RCP 4.5 is a lower emission scenario. RCP 8.5 is a higher emission scenario, equivalent to not reducing our current emissions. Around the 2050 time period, we can already see some statistically significant difference between how many people would need emergency room care. But check out this long range forecast looking towards 2100. We can really see that with controlled reduced emissions, the changes that we see could really level off. The changes that we make, the resilience we build for 2050 would also protect us in 2100. But if we continue on this current path, this current high emissions path, the projected increase in healthcare burden is just huge. It's really a problem. The importance of reducing emissions in this area as in many areas on the globe creates real differences in the 2050 versus 2100 forecast. But with reduced emissions and that 4.5 scenario is still a future that is well within our grasp. There's so much quality of life that we can maintain 
related to human health, there's a lot more thriving that we can do into 2050 and beyond. But let's get moving. We're gonna refocus and take a look at the coast. Let's go back to our map on 676. Because as we talk about the coast here and why it might be so different than the forecast for the coast of Maine, we wanna look at our ocean geography. We can see that our cities that we're talking about in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, they're really sitting much more squarely on this extended Northeast continental shelf. So they're sitting on a shallower ocean, right? And there have been real changes to the temperature of these waters recently. We're gonna switch over to page 684, where we can look at the sea surface temperature on that Northeast continental shelf. This is uh, average you know, between summer and winter. We expect seasonal changes throughout the year, but we can see that over the last 40-ish years, the change, not only the rate of change, but the raw changes also uh, in terms of increased temperature are significantly higher for these waters than for waters globally. And because of that, because of this sensitivity of your ocean waters, we want to really drill down into specific data to give you the best idea of how warming and rising seas will impact your home. So I want to check out three different tools with you. Two of them are state specific, and one of them will help you get a very general picture. And this will help you get address level information so that you can look at your community, your neighborhood, and your home. The first one that we're gonna look at is um, Rhode Island's storm tools. Just a second and we're gonna share screen over there. This is the basic landing page that you're going to get to if you try and check out Rhode Island storm tools. Beach, samp.org slash storm tools. The navigation of this site is a little bit confusing. It's not totally user-friendly. So bear with me, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step walkthrough that'll help you to access the tools that you need. So we click down, click the image below to launch storm tools. We can do that, right? It takes just a second to load up and it's gonna let us look at not just sea level rise, but also storm inundation. And that's with and without sea level rise. I really like this tool. It just takes a minute to get into it. And there's like a number of walls of text that you can read to try and understand it, but we want the visuals, right? So let's go to storm tools for beginners. You can see it's gonna help you answer three questions that I'm sure we all have. Is the property currently valuable to vulnerable to storm surge? What would happen during current storm surges? and what will happen to storm surge with sea level rise. If we look at the map that's pulled up right now, we're looking at a current storm surge map. And we're gonna wanna get further into there through clicking on this link. A little weird, right? But we're going for it. I feel that without a walkthrough, there are many people who would give up on this tool and it's pretty cool. So let's not give up. Let's zoom in down here in these little peninsula areas. So what map is this? Is this a future map or a current map? It's a current map looking at vulnerability to a big coastal storm and how deep the flooding would be. Let's look in at the beach here. We got some housing, we got some beach. If we click on the different colors in this map, you can see how deep the flood would be during storm surge under current conditions. You're like, I'm here for the climate forecast. Here's where you're gonna go. Click over here on the contents of the map, scroll down. Let's turn this filter off and let's look at one and two feet sea level rise because we're probably gonna be in between there at 2050, probably towards the lower end. We can see that the sea level rise projections are inundating some land, they're narrowing the beach. Same thing with two foot, but we can see that it's a little bit more extreme. And you can see that the state 
is concerned about modeling two feet of sea level rise. So you should be too. Let's see what would go on with a coastal storm if there were two feet of sea level rise. Here we can see some movement of water directly into populated areas. And we can click on what the flood depth would be. So anywhere in Rhode Island, if you want to look at your 2050 forecast, this is the tab for you. Click down here to the coastal storm with two feet of sea level rise. You'll be able to look at the water depth in and around your neighborhood for any address in Rhode Island. So this tool, a little bit confusing, a little bit hard to get into the guts of it, but we can manage, right? Now we're gonna try and look at another tool, the Massachusetts tool, which also has a lot of valuable information, but I really think that many people would give up using it without a little walkthrough. So here, we're gonna share the screen and we're gonna look at this thing. Massachusetts has put out a ton of coastal resilience resources. And in my opinion, they're not that easy to use. Like you wanna look at a map, right? You want a visual. So we're gonna scroll down on the main page, mass.gov slash program. And here's what you want. The viewer is in the top right corner of the menu. We're gonna click on it. There's more walls of text. You can see you're gonna be able to look at maps with scary colors, but what do they mean? We're gonna look at this, we're gonna find out. How to use the viewer? Maybe we wanna use the viewer. Let's click on it. Sorry to be so salty here. Look at this, is it a viewer? No, it's a picture of the ocean. Here we go, sea level rise. You can see the coast here, but you're like, this looks like the normal coast. I don't see any changes. You have to zoom in really far to get this to work, and then it's going to jump scare you. Before we get the jump scare, <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to show you guys the key, but no, you don't get to know how bad it is until you have the jump scare. I'm sorry. So here, we're going in on Boston. We're going in on Logan International. We're pretty close. Everything looks fine, right? Except, well, bam, there's your sea level rise. I'm sorry. I think this is a very serious map, but I find this viewer frustrating. <clears throat> I mean, this is the kind of information you'd like to see in a larger, broader context, right? I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So now that we've zoomed in and we've jump scared ourselves, we can see the key. We're gonna be looking between one and two feet of sea level rise to look at direct inundation. And we can see that there will be some potential challenges downtown but there'll be a need for infrastructure resilience in downtown Boston, purely related to sea level rise, not related to flooding or hurricane surge. You might think that you could get that information related to hurricane surge if you switched over to the tab there. And you can see that our colors have changed. If we scroll down, we can see that these colors are related to the category of hurricane you're dealing with. However, it's important to note these data were mapped using the current sea level. So this doesn't show you any projections around increased vulnerability for 2050. It's just current data. The same thing for the FEMA coastal flood zones. This one, you have to zoom even closer in. But if you do zoom even closer in, you'll be able to see what coastal flood zone you have block by block in Massachusetts. And again, current sea level tool. So there's a difference right now in the state level tools we're looking at where Rhode Island is helping you look forward and get projected information for 2050. Massachusetts, the surge and the storm information is for current sea level rise only. The Rhode Island tool, I really think is superior. But we need to also look at a more general tool so that we can see a bigger picture of the coast and so we can get any information for Connecticut. So hang on just a second. And I'm gonna show you now a federal tool that is really pretty good. And that's the NOAA tool. All right, we're moving over there. Thanks for your, your patience. All right, coast.noaa.gov slash SLR and get started for the sea level rise viewer. 
you can see that this tool works for the entire country. A nice general interest tool, really easy to use. If you try and use it to talk to friends or family, I guarantee that you will not get confused and screwed up like you might for the last two state levels. Although I do love that Rhode Island tool. That's a great level of detail. So we'll zoom in so that we have a nice focus on our tri-state area. And if we model a foot of sea level rise here or two feet of sea level rise, you see that you're able to look at changes on the map globally for the entire coastal area that you're looking at. And that they'll be constant as you zoom in. It's a little bit harder to get sort of the micro local neighborhood data, but you'll see that you can zoom in pretty good. It has pretty good level of resolution. Let's look here at Bridgeport, Connecticut. We'll pull back to the current mean higher high water mark. We can see that this is a very populated area and that it is already, you know, a fairly marshy area. These green areas are areas that are already seeing some salinity encroachment. They're vulnerable to storm surges, right? And we can see that they're populated areas. If we look at a foot of sea level rise, we can see that it is impacting housing stock and that there is more housing stock that is going to become extremely vulnerable to uh, storm surge and flooding. And that at two feet, that's really a very serious problem where the blue are areas where the mean higher high water mark would normally be sitting um, in that housing stock. This NOAA tool, again, you can use it for any state. You can use these sidebars to really dig down. There are local scenarios modeled for a variety of places, particularly on the East Coast. And you can see where marshes are going to likely change their position and how that can impact storm surge. Let me get out of these tools for now. I really, I, I hope that these were useful for you and that they give you information so that you can dig down for yourself. Let's wrap this up though. Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, you're all in a region that's very sensitive to changes in emission. The more we can bring emissions down, the better the outlook you have. The range of possible futures is pretty dramatic for this region. Even under a lower emission scenario, you're gonna have changes in seasonality with much less to no snow by 2050. But the more we can keep down those emissions, the more we can avoid huge increases to your summer heat. As we saw in the coastal tools, your cities are facing very serious threats from sea level rise. And of course, that means an increase in your problems from storm surge and tidal flooding. There's a lot of work to be done to adapt your cities to the changes that are coming, but that work is already underway. I hope this forecast helps bring tools into your hands so you can see what you're facing on a very local level. And so you can think about how you're gonna be part of this response. These changes are rough, but change brings opportunity. The work that these coastal cities are gonna be doing will bring many opportunities for people who can get on top of this information and be part of the solution. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe and help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.